Welcome back, everybody. WHIP Radio in Philadelphia. Zach Gelb and Mike Zahn here with you. We're getting you ready for the Cherry and White game that will broadcast on Saturday, and it will be played at Edberg Olsen Hall. And now joining us on the hotline is the head coach of your Temple Owls, and that is Matt Rule. Coach, great to talk to you, and how are you? I'm doing, I'm doing great. Thank you very much for having me on, Zach. Well, it seems like we always talk about uh, with you some little playoff hockey, and I've always joked with you over the years uh, knowing that you're a big Rangers fan. I'm just wondering, when are we going to watch a game together when the Rangers are in the playoffs? As soon as I get invited. I'm, I'm always in. I just, uh, just keep waiting for my phone to ring. All right, so me, you, tonight, we're watching 8 p.m., right? You're free. <laughs> Sounds good. I can make that happen. All right, so let's get to your team this year. How they look so far in spring ball? I think it's been a good spring. You know, I think we have a lot of young talent. Um, we have a lot of guys who have played a lot of football for us, who have assumed leadership roles, who are playing their best football. And I think we have a lot of young people who uh, who are learning how to play the game, what it means to be a Temple Owl, and they're they're uh, they're, they're doing it at a high level at a young age, which is uh, really important for us. You lost a lot of seniors, and uh, really those players that you lost have meant a lot to this program, and you've seen the program really change, and you guys have a serious big-time football program now. Uh, you lose guys like Matt Ioannidis, Kyle Friend, and Tyler Medikevich, and we talk about how much they mean on the field, but really off the field. They're also uh, big leaders and great ambassadors of this university. Who are some guys on this year's team that you look to replace that presence of leadership from the guys that you lost? Well, I think we have a great senior class, a bunch of guys who have played a lot of football that have, that have done the right things on and off the field. You know, I think guys like Avery, Avery Williams, Stephon Marshall, uh, P.J. Walker, Jihad Thomas, Colin Thompson, uh, really the list goes on and on. A bunch of guys that have, have done the right thing that, that uh, you know, go to school, they do a great job in the community, and they're all really good football players. And so I, I feel really confident in our senior leadership. Uh, they know what it takes, they know what it looks like, and they're ready to do it at a high level. Not only do you have those players, but you have some new guys coming in, and then also, of course, guys that red shirt last year. Give me a player on the offensive end and a player on the defensive side of the ball that maybe people didn't really hear that much last year that you think will make it a big impact this year. Well, I think Joe Von Fair on the offensive line is, is a guy that left guard, but he's going to start for us, you know, red shirted last year, but uh, has proven to be an impact player right off the bat. Physical, tough, smart. Really a, really a special player. On the defensive side, I think, you know, Chappelle Russell is a guy that uh, registered last year who has tremendous physical ability. And what he's done is he's really grown, you know, in terms of his toughness, in terms of his, you know, mental approach to the game. He understands the game. And we think, you know, while he might not be a day one starter, uh, he's going to fill, fill a real, real role. He's going to be a great player for us and, and will be a household name here in a couple of years. We're talking to the head coach of the Temple football team in Matt Rule. And, Coach, you know, I, I know, as Zach already mentioned, you have Matt Go and Tyler, Tavon, Kyle, among a bunch of other seniors leaving. How hard is that to see not only guys that you experienced four years with, but when you were under Adazio staff, you helped recruit these guys. Now they're full-blown men and not just 17-, 18-year-old kids. I think it's exciting. You know, it's like sort of the circle of life. You know, you you see guys come in, you see them, you know, go through highs and lows. You see them battle adversity. You see them have some great moments. Then you watch them graduate, and now you hope hope that they either have great professional football careers or, or great jobs and, and things outside of football. But, uh, you know, that that's what's fulfilling. That's what makes you happy to be here. It's what makes it so great to be here for so long is watching those guys chase their dreams, have build great futures, and, uh, you know, it also reinvigorates you as, as, you know, you have another group of kids come in every year. They're freshmen and sophomores. And as you're going through sort of the hard times and the, you know, the battles that sometimes happen, uh, you know, seeing guys that have, have gone through it and had so much success, it really reinvigorates you to go out and, and approach it with a, a fresh mindset, knowing that those kids, too, will someday have, uh, ha you know, be on their way out, uh, having had a great career and having had, uh, you know, having the opportunity to have a great future. And you and your staff really helped put Temple football back on the map as you guys finished the year 10-4. and four. How important is it to have the majority of your staff come back from such a successful season? Well, they're the ones who do all the work. You know, Phil Snow's the best defensive coordinator in football. His defensive staff, Fran Brown, Elijah Robinson, Mike Saravo. I mean, a lot of people came in and tried to get those guys, to be quite honest. But they, they love it here. They love what we've built. They love the team. On offense, to have Glenn Thomas step up, I think he's a tremendous coach. To have Frizz Jackson back, Ed Foley, who's been a stalwart, who does such a great job with special teams and the tight ends. To have Chris Wiesahan here, who's a true offensive mind. To have Frizz Jackson, to have bring George Gillion back, 
uh, you know, I, I think it just uh, it, it breeds so much familiarity with the kids. Uh, they know what we do. We're a little un- unconventional sometimes in the way we do things, but our guys understand that and they understand why. And at the same time, let me make sure I say this. You know, everyone else in the building is the same, whether it's Rich Berg and Sports Information, Quentin Smith with compliance, our operation guys, our strength staff, our, our, our equipment staff, our medical staff. Everyone stayed because this is a great place, and the kids recognize that people want to be here. And you take a look at it. The last year was a very successful year, and uh, you said college game day come or you beat Penn State for the first time in 74 years. But even your players talking to them, they weren't satisfied, especially with the last two games, how they went down, going up against Houston in the bowl game and the loss in the rain to Toledo. Just how motivated are the guys from the last two games of last year to really just go there and then finish the job this year? Well, I hope they are. You know, And I think that hopefully the one lesson they learned from that is you know, you have to take advantage of every opportunity. Every step along the way allows you to get back to those games and hopefully win those games. And so, you know, instead of focusing on, you know, six months from now, they better focus on right now because every every day is an opportunity to get better and to really close that gap to, to, to make sure that when you do get back to one of those high-profile moments, man, you're ready and you're clicking on all cylinders and you've done everything you can to be at your best. So last year was a lot of fun. It was a great, great year, a lot of memories, but I'm certainly not satisfied. I don't think anyone here is satisfied. And let me just say this, had we won those last two games, I wouldn't be satisfied. So that really is the mark of a competitor, the mark of a true program, is when each year you come back hungry to accomplish things you hadn't done the year before. And you know it, the way that they played in the Houston game on offense. Uh, they did, they had two turnovers early on in that game. They had problems moving the ball in Houston's side of the field. And then in Toledo, uh, the offense didn't play that great as well. Just what do you want to challenge this offense to do this year, especially with the quarterback being P.J. Walker in his final year? Well, I think, you know, I've turned that offense over to Glenn, who I have a lot of trust in. And, uh, you know, I, I know that uh, I know that we were an efficient offense for most of the, most of the time last year. But I think we have a chance to go from being efficient to being explosive. You know, to go from being uh, a good offense to a great offense. And anytime you want to go from good to great, you know, you have to you have to fire on all cylinders. You have to take advantage of every bit of talent that you have, and you have to be a, a team that's completely focused on execution. And I think that's what Glenn's mindset has been. That's what our offensive staff's mindset has been. And you know, from what I've seen so far this spring from PJ. Uh, I think our players, especially PJ, are, are focused on being the best they could possibly be. So I, I'm excited about what we're doing on offense right now. You know, I don't know what it'll, it'll look like on Saturday at the Cherry and White game just because, you know, that, that's always an interesting day. But uh, I know from what I've seen in these practices so far that we have a chance to be a really good offense this fall. And last year you guys started 7-0, and and then the last seven games you went 3-4, and including a loss to Houston in the conference championship game and then a bowl game loss uh, to Toledo in Florida. Do you think scheduling had anything to do with maybe that poorest second half to go 3-4 and four where you had to go week after week after week, and in the first half of the season you had a couple buys to really help you through that stretch? Uh, uh, I think we only had one buy last year, so I, uh, I think um... – I think really at the end of the day, I mean, we, we faced, you know, a top 10 team in the country in Notre Dame. And, you know, that's, you know, that's one of those losses. I think um, we faced the top five team in Houston, uh, you know, who the week before beat maybe 52-31. I think, you know, after us in the bowl game, they throttled Florida State. I think we played them, you know, as competitively as anyone did in the last half of the year. You know, we played them on the road, and, and as, as Zach mentioned, it didn't play our best game, but certainly were a better team than Florida State was against them, and certainly a better team than Navy was against them. And then I think uh, USF was one of the top teams in the country in the second half of the year, so I, I, I would hate to take credit away from those teams. You know, I think that they played really well. So in terms of scheduling, I think just, just think we, we faced a couple of teams that were clicking on all cylinders in the second half of the year, and, and we didn't play as good as we'd like to. So. But, uh, you know, at the end of the day, the, the, those were good teams. We got, you know, Hopefully we play them again, and we're going to have to play better to beat them. So, um, you know, I, I don't look at it more. I don't look at it in terms of halves. I just look at when we face those guys. We face good teams, and, and they got they had our number that day. And all signs point to Jihad Thomas is going to be the starting back, of course. But then you have three rising sophomores uh, who have a chance to really get their names out there. And we saw them a bit last year. Have any of those three running backs really been explosive in in spring ball thus far that make you think that they can be the backup back to Jihad? Well, I think Rockwell Amshay could be the starting tailback. I think he's. Uh, he's proven this spring that he's one of the best running backs in the conference, and um, he's he's played at a really high level. I think Jagger's hitting his stride. You know, Jagger's 
bigger. He's six three. He's you know a different type of back. And sometimes with those guys, it takes a little bit more time to figure out how they how they run the ball, how they can be efficient. But I see signs of of a real jump that he's making right now. And then David Hood, you know, he he won the Memphis game for us at running back. He went in the game. He made all the plays. He made the dynamic runs, the sports center runs. And so he's proven he can do it at a high level. So Jihad's certainly a tremendous back, an all-conference back. But we also have three other guys that can be the starter that have proven that. And uh, I would say this spring that Ruckwell has, has, has certainly convinced everybody on this team that he's a force to be reckoned with in the future. Wrapping up with Matt Rule, who joins us. Cherry and White game is coming up on Saturday, 1 p.m. at Edberg Olson Hall. And you can listen to that broadcast of the game right here on WHIP Radio in Philadelphia. It was at a practice of yours last week, and uh, you saw Colin Thompson end the practice with the big catch, and the whole team mobbed him. It seems like Colin uh, should be a big-time player in your plans this year, Coach. Yeah, well, I mean, Colin is, uh, Colin's been a, you know, he, he's been a, a, a real integral part of our offense the last couple of years. It's just, you know, he's been, it's been as a blocker. So he hasn't always had the statistics and the numbers and all those things that, you know, I know a lot of tight ends would like, but he's taken his role so seriously. And as he's gotten better and better, you know, uh, as a blocker, you know, he's also always been a, a pass receiving threat. So I think he's a, a leader on our team. He's one of our tough guys. He's a guy that blocks the point of attack and gives us an advantage in the run game. He's also a guy that can get open, can make catches, and can make some run, runs after the catch. So uh, we're excited to have him back for another year and expect him to be healthy and, and full throttle when get started in the fall. I know this may be a little bit of a tricky question, but uh, I want to commend you first off for the recruiting job you and your staff did this year as the recruiting just improves each and every year. But what do you think the roles will be this year for Anthony Russo and Kyramo Diubate? Because a lot of people have been trying to get their eyes on those guys uh, as they should make a big impact uh, coming up for the future of this program. Well, I think, you know, it's always hard to say until guys get here, you know, because not only is it just a matter of the physical ability, it's also like, you know, what, what kind of shape they're in. You know, are they healthy? Uh, how ready are they mentally, physically? How well do they, do they know the playbook and all the different things? But, you know, I think in terms of Anthony, you know, uh, we've got three quarterbacks on scholarship that we like. Uh, we'll get every opportunity to show what he can do. And, and you know, it kind of comes down to what, it, you know, does he take advantage of those opportunities and how well do the other guys play? Um, you know, where does he fit? But uh, we certainly think he has a great future. He's a great kid and a tough competitor. And then I think with Caramo, I mean, uh, we're hoping that he's able to come in and, and help us on the defensive line because, you know, as much depth as you can have there, as many bodies as you can throw at people, the better you are. So we like our defensive line. We like the young guys. We like the older guys. And we're hoping that Brahma can come in and be another uh, another weapon for us, another guy that goes in there, gets after the quarterback, and stops the run. Before we let you run, as we're talking to Matt Rule, and you know how much eyes are now on your program. Uh, no one's going to let Temple football sneak up on uh, opposing team this year because of all the attention you got last year, the players getting the invite to the Combine and the NFL draft. I know that you're very happy for those guys that are going to the draft, but you're not satisfied yet. You want to make this a consistent program for the long term. How do you make this a consistent program to replicate the success that you've had so far in your career? I think you just keep doing the same things every day. You know, you, you, you keep being the same guy every day. You don't get too high. You don't get too low. Uh, you know, you don't get caught up in win streaks. You don't get caught up in, you know, you have a bad day, a bad couple games. You just keep being consistent. Keep being the same guy. Keep following the same process. Keep doing the same things. Not the easy things, though, the hard things. I think when you do that, then over time, you know, it, it breeds success. I think the, the people that get caught up in, you know, this, that, and the other thing. The coaches that get caught up in what's, you know, the newest fad, the newest this, they, they have a lot of success, and then they have, you know, real down moments. What we try to do here is just be consistently, you know, the same. I mean, just be consistently great. Try to execute everything that we do and hope that, you know, so far it's worked. We've gone from two wins to six wins to ten wins, and we hope that we can maintain that simply by just doing the hard things and doing them day in and day out. Well, Coach, we appreciate the time. We actually appreciate the time that you've given us uh, all your time here at Temple because Mike and I graduate uh, in a little bit short of weeks. So we really do appreciate it. I got some uh, wings and some pizza for you tonight if you want to come over and watch the Rangers. <laughs> I appreciate it, and I thank you guys for everything that you guys have done. You guys have been great.